Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Team America World Police Commentary. <laughs> this, this is the second, and up until now, uh, at the time of this recording, the last theatrical uh, made film by Trey Parker and Matt Stone, directed by Trey Parker, co written by the two of them. With yeah, Stone. until we eventually get an obvious movie adaptation of the Book of Mormon. I would be great with that because that's that, that's one thing by the, that won 14 freaking mm. Tonys, and I haven't seen that it yet. Wow, hang I'm on, hang on. I'm surprised Pedro, that there's told... I'm surprised that there's something of them that I've seen but you haven't. Pedro, you <laughs> told me this you told me this was a lost Thunderbirds episode, you liar. I never said that. <laughs> uh, but the, well Joe, remember, like I said, we don't get Broadway musicals over here. They don't come to my country. That's yeah, yeah for, for various reasons, musical theatre is a very like in general it, it's not a very it's not a very accessible medium. And so, that is but and, yeah. That's why... And that's that is why so you've I've never started. seen the social commentary genius of Avenue Q. I've yeah. seen Avenue Q. It was great. All right, so um, here's a so little I... bit of trivia for you, Jova. Like one of the uh, sorry for the audience. Um, the Robert Lopez collaborated with uh, Matt Tray and Matt on those songs. But anyway, yeah, yeah, this is Team America World Police. Basically, everybody, let me take you uh, just to give some mind a little context, everybody, because it's been years, and some of you younger people might not know this, but let me take you back to the mid two thousands. This, this was shortly after there was that whole, you know, Iraq thing, you know. George Bush like, was still the president, yeah. Junior. So, so basically, at the time, there was a lot of, um, let's just say, it was an interesting time in America, let's just say. I'll, I'll just put it like that. I mean, I guess uh, I should probably be the best qualified to confirm that since I'm the only American on the group. <laughs> sure. well, well, remember, Joe, we had the uh, news programs telling us what was going on, so it's not like we're completely ignorant about the matter. Trust me, um, nothing beats the first-hand experience. Well, obviously, well, obviously, I'm just saying, well, at least we know the basic the, gist the, of it. Oh, no, 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 by all means, by all means. The point being that the, the, other, the rest of the world had this kind of perception that America was essentially... Uh, T dictating whatever they wanted and they could get away with it just by sheer role of, uh, you know, military power. Yeah, so basically everybody, Team America World Police is basically Trey and Matt doing what they usually do. Satirize some of the questionable things that are going on in American society, in this case back in 2004. Um, as for, uh, you might be wondering why Dwebs is here, by the way, uh, since he's, he's, he doesn't care for Trey and Matt. Well, Dwebs, why don't you explain why specifically you wanted to join us for this commentary? What do you ask? Well, mainly for uh, mainly for the puppetry work because um, I'm not sure if you I'm not sure if the audience knows, but um, I am a fan of shows like Thunderbirds and Captain Scarlet, Wait, which was created which was created by puppetry. Jerry Anderson. The uh, same year this the same right. year this film came out, the live action Thunderbirds movie also released, which was liked by nobody. Not even the creator of the show. Um, who, who, and he also saw this movie, you know, puppetry, all that stuff. And he said that while he wasn't a huge fan of this movie, he felt it was a much better, more, much more faithful adaptation of Thunderbirds than, well, the Thunderbirds movie. <laughs> I would like to also say to you this real quickly. While it, while this movie is puppetry, the primary reason why it's puppetry is because Train Matt like to do what is the the contrast of the norm like everybody's doing cgi let's do puppets but i'm not kidding they literally say this in the making of featurettes that on a dvd that i have um so the same way at south park that we have paper cut animation because everybody's doing all this pretty looking animation no fuck that let's, let's just use fucking paper cuts there you go hmm. uh but all so right let's uh let's get started then so there yeah. everybody let's yeah. uh start uh basically tune up your uh Blu-ray, DVD, whatever you have, right before the Paramount logo shows up, it should be fine. I don't think there are multiple cuts of this thing. I don't, I don't think there are even different logos. All right, three, two, one, click. Uh, to give a, a, a little bit of information <coughs> for you, this, uh, uh, Trey, and Matt, Trey and Matt share my hatred for Michael Bay movies, and this movie is also kind of a parody of sorts of the Michael Bay movies of that, that Michael Bay was known at the time. Not Transformers, because it was before that. Bad I'm, Boys, I think. I'm, I'm talking about movies like Armageddon and Pearl Harbor, because this movie parodies a lot of shit from those two movies in particular. Mm -hmm. not, so, not so much Bad Boys. I, I didn't know he did Armageddon. <laughs> not so much Bad Boys, too. But that makes sense, like, though. It's, it's, <laughs> well, generally like Bad Boys too. Exactly, exactly. That's the thing. Bad Boys is actually regarded as his, one of his good franchises. 
And then Bad Boys 2 Also, the earth exploded. Yeah, everyone died. That was a short movie. But Bad Boys... But Bad Boys for Life was very good. Oh, yeah. That is definitely the best movie of the bunch. We needed to establish how much distance was it from America. I feel like there's some social commentary. Puppets playing puppets. A puppet? Playing a puppet. Mm. What are you Brilliant. talking about? These are totally real people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, Sorry. apparently, apparently, Trey and Matt found uh, doing puppetry was a lot harder than they thought it would be. So the production of this film was a nightmare. Yeah. Well, the, well I, I'm going to explain uh, later because they actually also addressed that in the in the special features. But I'll explain that later. So, yes, as you probably do know, Trey and Matt are well known for oh. their social commentary of such. Oh, you know. no. Oh, oh So, obviously, this movie took some uh, took a jab at the whole thing with the Middle East thing that was going on at the time. Yeah, <laughs> good old early 2000s. Well, this is more like mid, or at least... 2004. Right about... Well, so... 2004 technically still just fall into the early 2000s category. Mid you know, I'm willing story. to bet this isn't. I'm, I'm willing to bet this isn't real Arabic. No, yeah, not, uh, when, no, whenever... the, the, the thing I have to understand, Joe, that, is that this is all uh, intentionally made to be ridiculous. To, even the, the, even the French language was done in gibberish. Now, okay. Now, to be fair, Trey and Matt's greatest Irish. strength is also considered by some people to be their greatest weakness. Granted, though, that's more in modern times. Back then, oh, Trey and Matt were on top of the world here and there, with South Park being quite an acclaimed hit after acclaimed hit, especially with their take on uh, post-9-11 uh, America and whatnot. And the South Park movie here oh, and there. Oh shit! <laughs> uh -huh. Basically, basically, uh, this also you can also make an argument that uh, okay, there you go. So there you go. This is why the movie is called Team America: World Police. This is uh, back America. when America. Basically, America feels like they're the police of the world. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Bit heavy-handed, but again, you know, it's Trey and Matt, so. Did you really sure, expect sure. anything else? Libby Kitty. <laughs> Nobody is safe from their from their criticism. Now I will well, that from, puppetry, actually. Aside from that oh, guy. Oh, 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 Terrorize this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Empty weapon. Wait, why are you throwing why? your gun away? <laughs> because terror, because, sorry, because this it wants to make this interesting. Like oh, said. and of course the terror is an old school fool. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, might as well explain it. Uh, basic webs. Um, usually, Trey and Matt have a specific way of working where they they like to revise their scripts even during production. Big, to make sure their scripts are up to, with up to current day as possible, to make sure they don't make outdated jokes before they air. Uh, unfortunately, doing that with puppetry is not the same as doing that with animation, and that's why it, there were problems. When it For context's sake, South Park <laughs> is made in a way where it's incredibly, incredibly easy to reanimate stuff here and there to the point where they can re literally reanimate stuff in like a day or so. Not so much with the puppetry. Yeah, yeah. With, pup with puppetry, that's not really the same thing. Fortunately, the movie still turned out fine. Not the Louvre! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. shit. Yeah. No, I, I can't say it. The, um, the, um, okay, maybe not so much the actual puppets, but the, um, but the destruction of the environments is definitely something that I'd, um, recognize from, say, something like Thunderbirds. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can clearly see the strings, but trust me, that's that's the whole point. Well, I mean, you can see the I mean, you can see the strings in the '60s ones as well. Oh, all the, all those. Of course, we're gonna need the love subplot. Hmm. But is that really the time? But wait, it's just the beginning of the story. 
Wait a minute. If this is if this is Thunderbirds, where's the weird use of real hands? Actually, that's what he's using. That that hand with the ring. That's an actual real hand. I have. Hmm. I don't. I don't have any knowledge if Trey Matt saw no. either Thunderbirds or Captain Scarlet, so I don't know if there was any kind of inspiration. I would no. not. I would not be surprised if they had, considering how similar this does let, feel let's to shows of that caliber. Also, let, let, Let's just say, Dwayne, uh, later on they will actually mm. use, uh, not not necessarily human hands, but something that is biologically oh. real. So there you go, this is an- uh, Oh, this, oh, that. You know, this, feels, <laughs> this feels a lot like the kind of shit you would see in Pearl Harbor, the melodramatic type of stuff that you would see. Yeah. Oh, um, I've, uh, I found, I found out about, um, Thunderbirds, about, with Trey and Matt, actually. They said, um... The earliest origins of the film involved um, involved the two watching Thunderbirds on TV when they were bored. They said they recalled seeing it on TV, but they weren't fans. And Parker, because he felt that the um, show couldn't hold his interest as a child, because the dialogue was apparently expository and slow, and it took itself very seriously. I actually well, I, 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 I mean, I agree with the I can agree with the slow dialogue, but. I mean, it's a show about rescuing people from really, really dire situations. Well, Debs, you can't expect... Well, everyone has different like, tastes uh, for that kind of thing. Yeah, it's fine. It's just, I don't, it's fine. I just don't really, just don't really understand that last <laughs> bit is all. Is this a parody of Rent? Maybe. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> this is the main character, Gary. He's an actor, a Broadway actor specifically, and he's singing this play called Everyone Has AIDS. And the, the plot twist is, Dwibs, everybody at the end dies from AIDS. Oh. Uh, well, um, you kind of spoiled it in the song. <laughs> <laughs> and then everybody dies. Did you write this play? Uh, no, I mean, I said I was a fan of Thunderbirds, but I didn't think you wrote the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone as AIDS guys! Yay! And the interesting, interesting this, story. This is so fun. <laughs> Another interesting thing is that um, when when the when the pair inquired about the rights to Thunderbirds, they, when and then they found out the Universal was making a was making a film based on that, they said uh, we said what Jonathan Frakes is directing puppets, and then we found out it was a live action version. We were disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that one person didn't particularly like the show, it seems. So, hold on. This is, hold on. This is important, kind of. Called acting. <laughs> well, there is an actual method actors use, so. Yes. He's a regular Zach Efron, that so, yeah, guy. Yeah, he's voiced by Trey Parker. Most of the voice, most of the male characters are voiced by either Trey Parker or Matt Stone. There are other differences, like the the character we're about to meet, but mm. it's staying true with the the South Park show. Most of the male characters are voiced by either Trey or Matt. This one is voiced by a different guy. I forgot who it was. Darren Norris. <laughs> What? Okay, yeah, for, for a second there, I thought that was Jeff Tracy. Hmm. <laughs> mm. Oh, oh God! I love this joke a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, here's the thing, Pedro. This guy is uh, has done a lot of voice acting, but among his uh, role, one of his early video game roles is King Ram in King's Quest: Mask of Eternity. Oh huh. God! Oh. To be fair, to be Wait. fair, he has like a shit ton of other different roles, and a, a lot of is them that... are so much oh, better. No, anyway, sure, is, that, sure, is, sure. That, is that King's Quest Eight? Yes. yes. And it, hmm. whatever. Uh, basically, with, <laughs> I still basically don't know with, what to think about that since we haven't gotten to commentating on that game yet. Basically, Dwebs, um there was also a similar joke in South Park, the South Park movie, where they say, "Ah, screw that probably movie's probably not that good." Anymore. What are you talking about? You love Terrence and Philip, yeah, but the animation is all crappy, and then it shows the characters moving in that crappy way that they move right, right after mm -hmm. he says that. So this is a common self-aware uh, guy. Excuse me. Have. 
Nah, uh, just kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> You're a terrible actor. Oh. It is, it's interesting you say that, Bruce, because every South Park episode starts uh, make it with a, well, a disclaimer warning saying that the uh, that the acting in this show is crap, so keep that in mind. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. Like, our whole entire brand is being crap, so... Of course, Just only us. you. Valmorphanize. <laughs> so the thing is the map reveal, basically. Pretty much. Nothing to see here, people, on the flipping Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> it's Every like, day. It's safe Everybody's... to do this now, in front of everyone! <laughs> Everyday's business, Dora, come on. I mean, well, no, after all, uh, you, you... Uh, uh, uh. You. Alright. Oh, okay. Makes sense. <laughs> that, that's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, X, kind of think of it, this is a Paramount movie, so technically that New York could be a part of the MCU. Like, I, thought you said you would compare, I, I thought you said you would compare it to the Bayformers movies. And, I, and, and now you're making me think of the final battle in Endgame, but then with puppets. Again, again, <laughs> guys, guys, I just want to imagine, what would the MCU have been like if it was still mainly Paramount and Universal calling the shots instead of Disney eventually buying the whole thing up? Well, Kevin wouldn't be as in much control as he is, so probably there wouldn't <laughs> be as much uh, interconnectivity between movies as there is, probably. Open wide, George. Yeah, their headquarters is in Mount Rushmore. In so... George Washington's head. Because yes. no one would ever think to look there. Oh, by the way, you may want to watch out. Nicholas Cage is probably going to be I coming was about to mention, some point. yeah. <laughs> also, you have a terror threat, but your first instant instinct is to hire a Broadway actor. Uh, that, 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 Don't they, worry, they, Shuri. Explain... There is some logic to this. They're going to explain why they need him later. Don't worry. The, the, the plan makes no sense, mind you, but, well... At least we have one. I guess. <laughs> of course. Ah, oh, yeah, of course. You're gathering together people who, while they may be very Arctic good in their talent. profession, they're not trained to be actual spies. <laughs> and it kind of drips. She's the psychic one. <laughs> so in true Roland Emmerich slash Michael Bay uh, method, yeah, the characters are basically archetypes. Oh, hey, a martial artist expert. That could come in handy. And probably in Detroit, so prone to violence, I guess. What, so. what have you got against actors? <laughs> uh, don't worry. He will actually explain why. Yes, it's tied to his backstory, Drips. And let's just say that it's timely, considering a certain movie that came out recently. At the time uh, the what, the Sonic movie? No, 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 you'll see it. It's not a Paramount film. It's a Fox right. film. Well, not a Fox film, it's a... It's a film. You'll it's a Disney Fox film. It's a Fox Disney. A, 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 a universal film, I think. But I can't yeah. tell you which, which one it is, because it will spoil it. So the point is Disney don't own it. Okay. Yeah, and it's, their computer is called Intelligence. Because funny acronism. But it's voiced by Phil Hendry. Check hmm. what it is. <gasps> oh, it was a radio oh, yeah. talk show. <laughs> that, yeah, that is true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna touch that. Moving on. <laughs> basically, basically, sure they want him to do a be a cover. Yeah, if you're not interested, there's the door. 
Oh. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> Um, well, I wasn't expecting <laughs> that, he, so... He was supposed to stay, damn it. God damn it. We told him where the door yeah. was, so yeah. Of course you all. It's yeah. not that like he's the only actor in existence. But apparently, <laughs> as we've established earlier, he's apparently the greatest actor right now. It's not just that. Greatest he's the actor one with, who ever lived. He's the one with a heart. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, since we're puppets, we can't quite point to it. But, uh, <laughs> She's trying. Yeah. Well, we're going to try. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, a blonde called Lisa in the room released the previous year. It all makes sense. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> also, right. are you gonna finish that glass, sir? No? Okay. Wait, oh. if you don't know, how do you see it? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the other girl psychic. <laughs> And then yeah, and even he's looking at her like, what are you talking about? Like, that, that makes no sense, lady. Don't you see? It's all about an inherent intuition. All right. Uh, in tr all right. Since this is a train, a Trey Parker movie, obviously it's a musical, so we're going to about to get our first song. However, it's not a typical musical number. Uh, the songs in this movie are actually the Tarzan, Brother Bear type of songs, in the sense that the, it plays over what's going on. Like, in, is it? But I guess, I guess, I'm guessing that's the joke. Yeah. Pretty much. You'll see. Hold up. <laughs> I love the the grainy filter on this. Part yeah. <laughs> and also the weird shots that they have here. <laughs> oh. Just as tall as the the gray stone. <laughs> True, freedom isn't free. Fun fact, later on, uh, way later, years later, South Park would make it, uh, an episode making fun of mobile games. It was called Freemium isn't free. Isn't free, free yeah. yeah. Oh god, I free. like get that it? one. Get it? <laughs> I think uh, it was, uh, that the title was also referenced later on in uh, um, uh, in the game that actually played but kind of for another time. Meanwhile, meanwhile, in back at the, the terror in, in the the best place ever, North Korea, North Korea, Korea. Asia. <laughs> North Korea. We're, about meet, we're about to meet the villain of this movie, King Ong Yil. Before Kim Jong Un, of course. And I'm also sure this isn't real Korean we're going to hear no, either. No. No, <laughs> Trey Parker, Parker only knows Japanese when it comes to foreign languages, sure, because he's, he's married to a Japanese woman. Mm. <laughs> I love this, this upcoming joke, though. Hold on. Right here. Oops. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, you do speak English. You just wanted an excuse to shoot him? Yes. Pretty much. <laughs> That's because I'm a cartoon I'm a cartoonist the evil terrorist. Don't you know? You know what you know what I, you know what I just realized, Jova? What? This this movie is just as cartoonishly ridiculous as my parody that I that I, that me uh, Teo and Dribs did at the end of our Detroit playthrough. Maybe not quite as cartoony as you guys did it, but it's close. Good to know you're supportive. <laughs> well, he's got to be the Lancer, Teo.
that's that's fixable. Yeah, we, that's what these guys are for. Yeah, facial surgery. Oh boy. <laughs> We know this, you need to swap your face with the one of John Travolta. This will only <laughs> hurt a lot. He looks absolutely petrified. <laughs> I mean, I'd be too. Well, I'm by no means an expert, but usually, you, you, don't you usually, you know, Use anesthesia on, on a patient. Uh, uh, yeah, having... sedative uh, yep. of some kind at the very least. Uh... And none was mentioned, so this could hurt a lot. Whatever, they're no puppets, so it's not like it matters. They're not alive. <laughs> how could you, How do you know they're not alive? Unless the blue fairy shows up here, I don't think so. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> they will com be completely fooled. <laughs> Absolutely, ten out of ten. <laughs> of all the names to pick. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Dweebs. That's uh, there's Conan White's chair. <laughs> What's well, yeah, it? Oh, it's, it's not just the chair that spins around, it's the whole desk in that one. <laughs> True. Where are the, tra where are the transitions? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dwebs, but... Um, what, 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 does Fernal Bird also have the transitions from Captain Scarlet? No. Okay, if, if this is more like Thunderbird, Bird, then it shouldn't have the transitions then. Mm. <laughs> there you go. This is your weapon. Uh, this is not the Captain Scarlet transition. In case, in fact, it, just in case you need to take your yeah. own life. I mean, you could have given a cyanide pill or something, but no. A, a hammer to the head, yeah, that's much more painful. <laughs> there we go. Oh, go. America! The, the, the best song ever. America! <laughs> oh, yeah. You probably heard this somewhere Freedom else, Dreams, because it's so used. Way, yeah. Can you feel the freedom? <laughs> okay, maybe not that as detailed. That plane but... isn't an eagle. Zero out of ten. Uh, uh, obviously a, sat a satire of um, over-the-top American macho attitude type of thing. It does remind me also of stuff like the openings to G.I. Joe. Yeah, why don't you trust actors, Chris? Ooh, he's got a dark past, guys. <laughs> I'm oh, sure it's no. all that important. <laughs> of course you can. And yeah, that, that's exactly the kind of this the melodramatic Oscar, Oscar line, bait you, you, line you, you, yeah. you, you would hear from Armageddon or something like that. Oh, look, uh, apparently we're in Tatooine. Right. <laughs> it was feeling Tunisia, not Tiji. It's me, Jakku. <laughs> oh, boy. Here come the Americans. Oh shit! Americans, <laughs> literally, run away! Run away! Literally parking the oh, middle of a We front. protect, we serve, we care. Yeah, absolutely. And cannot what? parallel park. Well, I mean, it's a helicopter. Still. Perfect, these guys. <laughs> sure you are. Yeah, the so, music which is why you almost... parked in the middle of a town. Yeah, so the music was like Eric Jackson, aka the Metal Gear Solid composer. Guys, guys, come on. Uh, not really, but sure. 
blah, 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 military conflict. Blah, 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 blah. All right, so the plan is to go around with our guns throughout the streets of Cairo looking for terrorists, all without uh, terrorizing the population. That should be easy, right? Uh huh. Th 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 yeah. <laughs> Especially since one of your agents goes around with a fucking Gatling. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. So jazz hands, okay. <laughs> hey, Coca Cola. <laughs> yeah, there is, uh, there is actually, in true tradition, also a lot of product placement. I prefer Pepsi anyway. I don't mind either. Yeah, I'm that guy who takes a third option. You do not need to see my identification. Oh, wait, sorry. The third yeah. option is Dr. Pepper. But that's Coca Cola, on, just hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on, Gary, <laughs> act! <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. That worked. Hashtag nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I'm guessing you don't watch many movies or plays, do you? <laughs> of course, uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yes, yes, we were saying about Tatooine. Yeah, gotta have well, a Tatooine reference. Well, well, I said, well, I said uh, Daku, actually. Daku, Daku so. true, true, sorry. I don't like you. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I don't like you either. You don't even know me. You know what? That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yeah, back on Family Guy was good. Yeah. There wasn't anything, there wasn't <laughs> anything how, on the Facebook page about I love it. How the, I love how the approach was basically the same of the undercover cop that tries to check out drug pushers. Mm. I mean, the stereotype one. Oh. Hey, kids! Oh, shit. Sarah's sensing that he's, she's becoming attracted to Gary now. For, because... <laughs> Yeah, it's too painful, Sarah. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> we, oh, oh, just, uh, do we, with we, anything. Okay, so we went from... Uh, I, we girls stick together, I guess? You know, that seemed almost borderline passive-aggressive, not gonna lie. And by the way, this guy is also in love with Sarah. No, don't go into the cornfields. That's the fool's way out. Yeah, you're gonna die. Oh, oh, boy. You, you don't want to go there. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so to you. Such such a touching story. <laughs> You're gonna declare war on them, eh? 
It's for his goat's sake. So oh, no, 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 um, oh, uh, inter interesting to know. Well, that, that, not that there's anything wrong with that, right? Pause. There's nothing wrong with, mm -hmm. there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Beat. All right. Oh, shit. Why, did, why are you all just standing there? Because they're puppets, Shiroi. the window? <laughs> well, instead of assuming that he's with them, they genuinely believe we're we yeah. on, his, on his tail. Yeah, are all the also, actors um, other than him in this world just that shit? I don't yeah, know. One, one, thing I should, one thing I should mention, what, during you know, the Thunderbirds and Captain Scarlet shows, um, they, didn't, they didn't actually show the puppets' legs walking because, well... Yeah, it would have been... Yeah, yeah. Just well, like yeah. what happens in but this, this, movie. Movie, this yeah. movie. However, this movie is meant to be completely ridiculous in any way, so it makes sense mm -hmm. to have jokes at, at, at the expense of that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually curious, were there actual toys, toy lines are released based on this movie? I don't think there so. There may I have been. been. Let me check. Die, infidels. No oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna kill your mates. Worse, he's gonna blow up the pyramid that's a, of Giza. That's, that's, that's the problem. That turns out that this guy's is way too convincing. They they don't realize it's him. You know, as um as horrible as um destroying an ancient monument is, if they only did that in Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen, at least the movie would have been over sooner. <laughs> no, not the temple. I forgot the name. I think it's the Temple of Osiris. Lovely. An infidel! It's a good thing she has a gasoline gun. Yeah, how is she not dead? <laughs> She's just that badass. What, remember, remember also, what? because gasoline gun. And of Action. course, uh, she managed to yeah. spare the one dancer on the back. Obey logic, I know. <laughs> Action movie logic, Lips. <laughs> okay, there actually were Team America World Police toys back then. Oh, really? Interesting. Yep. Were they actual puppets, or they were just, like, typical um, action figures? There was a remote-control America Hummer truck, like, you know, the one we're seeing right now. I mean, now. yeah, that, that she just sells uh, itself. Uh. Let's see, um... Not quite sure oh, if they're shit. actual puppets, but there were sort of dolls and action figures. Please buy our action figures. If you do, we can fund we can fund like two more I episodes. Love, I, I love how uh, Gary has a towel. Uh, Wait, which is it's it's supposed to be a turban, but it's just a towel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they're buying this somehow. Shiroi. It's it's <laughs> There's amazing story shit, right? It got to them. <laughs> Remember, he channeled, he channeled his, the worst moment of his life into the sadness act. Valmorphanized. Weird. Weird. <laughs> Yoink. <laughs> well, and yeah, another Michael Bay thing. You can uh, do stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the Sphinx. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Boom. Congratulations, Steve America! You destroyed the national monuments of Egypt. <laughs> we're actually gonna, we're actually gonna address that in a moment too. Yeah. They destroy a lot of important things. Well, that's Michael Bay for you. Well, guys, mission accomplished. Astounding yeah, we blew, a, we blew up a pyramid and all sorts. All right, and now time for yeah, evening world do. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh great, the Baldwin uh, family. Oh uh, yeah, is this uh yeah. Uh-huh. By the way, Malik Baldwin is voice by Mauricio Lamarche in this movie. Yes. Ah, so this is basically a take on 
how celebrities just wade into these kind of situations. Yeah. Even though they don't know what they're talking about, yeah. It, it's, so surpri- it's so surprising mm-hmm. that a movie from 2004 is still so valid on this, even right no. now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and of course, Sean Penn. Um, you know, that's interesting thing. Of all recent actors to talk about stuff like that, I think the one most qualified is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because he's he was an actual politician. Uh, 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 Wait for it. That's how Matt Damon says his name. Matt Damon. Is, um, Matt Damon. <laughs> is, this a, is this a gag on how Matt Damon doesn't have much acting range or something? You have to understand that Ben Affleck and Matt Damon were were not as good actors back then. Like they improved a lot in years, especially Ben Affleck. Uh, but uh, you have to understand that most of these actors were younger back then and didn't have as much experience. Mm. To give you a basic idea, Dwibs, they've made a lot of fun of Ben Affleck in a lot of South Park episodes. However, yeah. to give you an idea, a lot of people kept tweeting them, "Have you guys seen Argo? Ben Affleck is is so awesome now." And eventually, Dwibs, they made the South Park episode where. There's literally a moment where Butters basically goes, Okay, okay, Argo is a very good movie. Which is basically Trey and Matt turning to their friends and saying, Okay, okay, Ben Affleck is awesome now. Is that what you wanted us to say? It's like, no, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> um, well, and also about Matt Damon, by this point, Matt Damon, you know, two Jason Bourne movies had come out, so that joke was kind of dated. <laughs> well, it's a 2004 movie. Of course, some of the jokes are going to get dated. That's inevitable. I well, think he before the film came out. I think he means that by the time the movie came out, the whole pinching on Matt Damon <laughs> thing is a bit dangerous. just a bit more Ooh. on the left. There you go. No! He was about to. F- he was asking for proof that there's actual. Uh, yeah. And oh, yes, <laughs> no, no, not, and not it, the live action sharks. <laughs> and it, you see, you see, Dwebs, uh, turns out King Kong Hill is actually a Bond villain. <laughs> uh, well, didn't we already know that? <laughs> Menacing. But, but of course, it's time instead to get wasted. <laughs> You haven't won yet. Shut up, Dwebs. We saved the day. We saved the day, Dwebs. Apparently. But you, but you destroyed half of Cairo. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Are you, are you sure about that, Spotswood? <laughs> Terrorist or game is through? Because I don't uh, yeah, remember it's that. A... It's another, it's a t- I think this is a take on that trope of, oh, we destroyed one bunch of terrorists, therefore terrorism is over! Yeah! yeah. Well, a lot of these uh, movies that uh, Emmerich and Bay made were very much like that naive, sadly. But anyway. Okay, if I'm going to give Bay some credit, that was more so Emmerich's deal. Bayes was more just going over the top here and there. He wasn't always as naive as Emmerich's movies were. Ugh. True, true. I guess I would. Uh, yeah, because like <laughs> uh, how the military behaves in movies like Godzilla and, Star- and Stargate. Uh, yeah. Like, I'm gonna be honest, at least with Bayes movies, I can occasionally say, okay, sometimes it feels like the guy's done his research. Emmerich has just been disappointing to the point where he even managed to ruin the one franchise people liked him for, Independence Day, with the sequel. Uh, but but, but, Jova, but, but Jova, he, didn't, he hasn't ruined Stargate. Did people Other remember? people probably did. That's the thing, though. Most people don't even remember him that he made that one. Yeah, and honestly, for as much as Stargate was well-received back in the day, it's not really remembered as fondly as, say, Independence Day. Uh, hold on, I'll well, check out this. I think- more That's people remember the TV show. We're gonna finally learn his t- his tragic backstory. <laughs> oh no! Were you disturbing Harambe? <laughs> I know, right? It, it, it almost <laughs> predicted it. Was, this movie predicted it almost a hundred percent. I had no idea how. <laughs> like... I think South Park is no, sorry, Trey and Matt in general. I think they're they're only second in predicting things to the Simpsons. I know, right? (gasps) 
<laughs> oh, wow. Why not just shoot them with a tranquilizer? Because that's not the American way. I it's, don't better, know. It's, it's better. It's better the VA so, approach, Louis. So there we go. That's just tragic backstory. His acting got his brother killed. I'll say that's Gorilla. probably a better. Ex it's probably a better explanation. They just needed it to be more dramatic and sad. Yeah. Sure. Why not? <laughs> You work for one day. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, see? And this relationship is kind of bullshit. <gasps> we'll be together by the end of the movie, though, anyway. <laughs> because we are just going to be so in love with each other. This is straight up Armageddon right now. <laughs> <laughs> Great line. No, I haven't even seen Armageddon. I have. <laughs> you should just have a laugh at Weebza. I've heard of that movie. Oh, 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 I mean, I love this one. I love this one. Hold on. Let's see. So, can we. Is it our chance? Yeah. Wait, wait for it. <laughs> That's not how this works. Uh, well, time to get some immortality. I promise I will not. <laughs> well, to, well, to his credit, after she said that, like, okay, you're still attempting me here. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna do it on top of Lincoln's head. No, no, we're actually going to. Or so there go. And now we have puppet sex. Well, since there are no genitals, uh, technically this doesn't count as literal um, Barbie doll yeah. anatomy. Yeah. How, how do they even procreate? The same now way. They <laughs> cut off their limbs and yeah, they yeah, yeah. babies. To rem remind me, the, the webs, are there any kind of child characters in either Thunderbirds or Captain Scarlet? Uh, Thunderbirds. Well, in that case, you can make that question for Thunderbirds as well. How do uh, they procreate? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, th th this is a clear parody of Aerosmith. Um, I don't want to close my eyes. That baby was using Armageddon. You were saying, Java? <laughs> um, to their credit, um, Robot Chicken did actually touch base on that. You know, there's a oh, lot um, of. Uh, oh. It's like, they're gone. There's yeah, a lot just of just shut up. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, careful. <laughs> yeah, they never got the hang of this whole pointing thing, did they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Puppetry um, star. Oh yeah. You know that scene earlier that oh. took the piss out of those actors that yeah. uh that, that waded into all those situations where they weren't qualified to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, Sean Penn, IRL, was one of the few celebs that were unabused by this movie's well, piss take of him, and apparently wrote a very angry letter to Trey about telling them how angry he was. Okay. <laughs> a strongly worded email. Uh, 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 <laughs> As if Trey and Matt actually give a crap about <laughs> they even they the, the two themselves said they ended up being more abused than intimidated since the contents of the letter were exactly the same thing they were making fun of him for. It also explain it pays a lot because Sean Penn has been involved in a lot of uh, uh, humanitarian campaigns, like in a sense of marketing and putting his face on them. Well, I mean, his well, I mean, his action career imploded. So, what else is he going to do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. No. Dios mio. Freaking terrorists. I love all their cries of terror, literally repeating the phrase of Megusta. <laughs> the humanity. All that's missing is a discretionary shot of a doll floating up and face was, down on the wall. Jova, Jova, there are multiple discretionary shots of dolls. You know, funny story. No, 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 I mean like least... an actual, like, doll. <laughs> Look at the donkey, <laughs> You know, a funny, interesting story. There were at least there was at least one or two episodes of Captain Scarlet where someone that was someone drowned in the ocean. Uh-huh. 
No. Bad intelligence. Bad. Bad. Oh. <laughs> You're fired. Oh, no, sorry, that's not American enough. You're fired! <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> of course, Dorka Dorka stun. Totally Obviously. a <laughs> You need to choose better your own models. Yes, I agree. It's funny because Alec Baldwin is quite possibly one of the best uh, social critics of Donald Trump, if SNL is anything to go by. Well, I mentioned the Sean Penn thing earlier. Apparently, uh, Matt, Matt Damon actually thought that bit of him was hilarious. So, um, neat. Oh, Matt Damon is a cool guy, so I don't, I'm not surprised by that. I mean, America, I mean, he, he, accepted, he accepted to be a, like a one, ten, a ten seconds cameo as an actor oh, in I University of Michael Moore. Michael Moore. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, this was also the time where Michael Moore was releasing like a shit ton of mockumentaries. Oh, yeah. Apparently, um, how they treat Michael Moore in this movie apparently came about as an act of revenge for Matt Stone, who apparently wasn't happy when a film called Bowling for Columbine deceived moviegoers into thinking he was in favor of of Michael Moore's causes. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah, this is Matt Stone basically taking revenge on a guy who, um, what's the right word for it? Assumed uh, wrongly. Assumed yeah. wrongly, yeah. Not just that, Michael Moore in general is just an asshole anyway. <laughs> yeah, we need your acting. Wow, you really suck, then. Uh, actually, yes, there is. At, at, yeah, there is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't just say that. My angst is ramping up. Yeah, true. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. And now the group is breaking up over this. You know, if, um, if the real, um, groups like this in real life that this kind of stuff we'd all be doomed it's it, basically it's kind of similar to how kubrick portrayed um the government in dr strangelove you know like as a bunch of buffoons who don't know what the hell they're doing basically <laughs> Yeah, with, with guns and explosives. <laughs> That's what you do anyway. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, now we have a sad version of America, America. fuck yeah. America, fuck oh, no. Hold on, hold on. Oh, why did I say <laughs> fuck them? <laughs> Uh, apparently, also apparently, Matt Damon was supposed to be portrayed as an intelligent person, but they saw, but then Trey and Matt saw the puppet. Yeah. <laughs> they saw, apparently, they saw the puppet, and they thought, you know why? It'd be much better if we just have him be ridiculous. <laughs> Let's transform me into a Pokemon. I choose you, Matt Damon. America. It's the sadness of being free. <laughs> Where are Remember, we, are freedom we isn't free. There are Why, the why aren't you there sad is a cost, you know. God, <laughs> what that face, though. Is, is, there, is there such a thing as free? 
Freedom is relative. Only if you're in America, Dweebs. <laughs> I mean, but is this really what, freedom? That's what Bandit Keith told me. Oh shit. <laughs> I like how we already had like the team breakup scene and we're only just over halfway through this. Oh. <laughs> um <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not I'm not <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna no. <laughs> <laughs> it's also funny because the game home front will be released a, a couple of years later in a scenario that uh, that has the North Korea taking over the USA out of nowhere. Yeah. Oh the uh, one um when Harry Gregson like, Williams did the score, why was Bud upside down though? <laughs> like what? Jova, is there yeah. a mechanism in Mont Rushmore that switches gravity? Maybe. When the when Harry well, Gregson well, well, Williams. Okay, well, keep in mind, Taylor. Even if there was, he's not going to tell you. It's a oh, sorry, you, you were national saying national secrets and all. You understand, right, Jova? <laughs> when, uh, yes. When Harry Gregson Williams was scoring the movie, um, unlike a lot of other comedy films. He, he scored this film completely straight as if it was an actual action movie. Yeah, that's actually the, the method that Trey that. That <laughs> might do with their compositions, do it, because... Uh, Even uh, the South Park video games, for example, retain that kind of yeah, aspect. Basically, Trey might specifically tell their composers, you're supposed to compose this as if, like, you need to take your score completely seriously, because there, that's the whole idea. All this ridiculous events happening at the sound of this incredibly serious music, basically. Because uh, the so the basically there's the um, the South Park uh, the stick of truth. Oh, Michael, what are you doing? Uh, God damn it, Michael! You're not helping. Um. Okay. Um. Uh, yeah. Uh. Uh. Quick question. Um. Uh. Quick question, Pedro. Um. What is it about Michael Wall you don't like? Uh. The fact that his mockumentaries are full of horse shit. Uh. But like it. it like let's just say Wait. let's just say I don't like them and that's it. Documentaries. The guy does actual straight up documentaries. Well, right, right, whatever. The, the granted is, is they're incredibly they're incredibly biased documentaries that are uh Which is which kinda of destroys the purpose of a documentary. Just saying. Let me put it like this. He's like that guy who yeah realized means well, but holy cow He's is, one of those people it, who a, decided he was going to, you know, uh, cash in on people's fragility when, after the 9-11 the events, basically. That's the thing. I... He seems to actually legit believe in his own stuff. Like, you know, it would be kind of less worse if he was actually trying to cash in on that, but no. He seems to be 100% serious. I don't... Uh, I guess uh, it's up to who you, what you believe. I personally don't buy it. Perfect parachute. Oh no. Team America is dead. No, no, no. Worse. Now we're prisoners of North Korea. Oh no. Dun, dun, dun. Turns out King Hong Yeo is secretly orchestrating this whole thing. I love, I love Trey's uh, Korean voice. <laughs> Wait, was goodbye the signal? Oh, no, that's best song in the movie. Well, oh no, god, I forgot he gets second, a song. <laughs> second, second best no, song. And not just any song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Isn't this so moving? <laughs> Make, makes me just empathize with the, makes just empathize with the tyrannical, on the merciless yeah. monster yeah. of a dictator. Yeah, it's just a song about a bloody dictator. 
but don't you see, Dwebs? I work really hard on my friends, and nobody understands them. Nobody values my friends. <laughs> at, the end of the, at the end of the day, he just needed a friend. Yes. <laughs> oh, honestly, <laughs> honestly, honestly, these days, to a lot of people, this would pass for a good tragic villain backstory, and that's yeah. bad. <laughs> <laughs> Again, how how is it that this movie managed to be so ahead of its time? Like, like people will just like eat it up yeah these days and it's uh, terrible again, also, again, you again. may have noticed Dweeb, you may notice dweebs in a bleak humid moment that statue of king john uh, king john Un, sorry Il, it was an actual person <laughs> anyway <laughs> uh tio and Shuri, the tv trap you're thinking of is draco in leather pants but draco oh, wasn't even so bad of a person that's the thing, though, sure. The That's idea the thing, of... sure. I kind of wish that he was. It would make him more interesting. Yeah. I mean, I mean there's, there's a difference between troubled individual and communist dictator. What do you say, Dweebs? What do you say, Dweebs? Are you convinced? But About what? But, but he's so wrong. Do you sympathize with him? He's, no. he's on his own. <laughs> You're no, horrible. He's a, di well, he's a dictator. Also, well, that's, well, that's exactly the thing, Dwight. Unlike uh, the current days that things that she, people, you know, think about, like she always said, Trey Matt meant for this to be ridiculous. It's stupid. The also, is, a lot of people take this seriously for some reason. Also, Gary nowadays. managed to grow. Managed, Gary managed to grow a five o'clock shade in like one day or less. Well, it's maybe not it's been that... a week. Maybe it's been a week. There's that too. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're going to get by far the best uh, the, 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 the speech that basically encompasses this entire movie mm. hey I remember this speech oh, oh, from oh, oh, South oh, Park oh, wait, wait, wait a second hold on, hold on. this is actually important somehow <laughs> this is literally the scene from South Park Yeah. But... <laughs> you. Yeah, that does it. Get out of here, you're drunk. <laughs> oh, so he has to leave, but not this guy. <laughs> Bonk. But what about the other guy? Okay. Also, he's trying to leave, you know. Like, he, he's just uh, very drunk. Believe it, or, believe it or not, that speech will be important later. You'll see. Mm -hmm. Ow. Yeah, this is the darkest hour moment, like, you, like you'd like to call it, too. You know what that means for Trey yeah, and Matt. Barfing time. Ugh. Yeah, anyway. Family, Guy, Family Guy would later go on to basically rip off this guy from this movie. Wait, uh, I, I don't like it about... either all, because, yeah. yeah. The interesting you know? thing about the film's um, age rating, uh, despite being rated NC-17, well, almost rated that, in the States, in, Europe, in several European countries, it was promoted as a family movie. <laughs> and, and was, <laughs> was rated a bit accordingly. Well, Dwebs, you have to understand that there are actually plenty of Ameri uh, sorry, European countries that are not as uh, strict with ratings as uh, America or the UK are. Yeah, like, but this example. movie, like, really? Uh, Would you take the children I. for this? Shiroi, I went to see Ted in the theaters, and there were 12-year-olds in the, in the theater. With Ted no isn't as bad, though. And, no one and, here. And, and, and their parents... Are you serious? Yeah, Ted's not quite as graphic yeah, as this Yeah, sorry. It, it isn't as bad as this. I wonder how they, I wonder how they did that effect after the puppet be well, filled with sick. I don't know about the second movie, but the first one... Yeah. Well, regardless, Shiroi, I can assure you that in my country, 12-year-olds would be allowed to go into the theater to watch this with their parents, and people wouldn't mind. I can tell you that. Film Actors Guild. What was it rated in the UK? On. Oops, so, you know. more of the, so yeah, more of the actors on being unqualified. Uh, yes, Siri? Uh, I said what was the rage rating here? Um, let me see. Let me see. Probably like 18. 
Robber, 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 robber. Hold on. <laughs> Fuck off, you fucking hawk. <laughs> <laughs> Leave Tyler and Samuel Jackson side by yeah, side. We'll, um, yeah, oh. we'll, tell, we'll tell people to be more considerate about their carbon emissions. Oh, oh, that's, oh, that's... <laughs> yep, that's what the <laughs> after is all about. Matt Damon. <laughs> I, 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 say... I, I agree, Matt Damon. I agree. <laughs> yeah, uh, also, okay, this film was rated 15 round here. And, um, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, I would say... This was a bit silly, but considering a couple, at least a year or two ago, there were all those actors saying we should cut down on carbon emissions, even though they're the ones using private jets to go. Yeah, everywhere. they're all taking their private jets to go like one country over. Yeah, like I like Teo said, this movie is very ahead of its time in a lot of ways. Uh, Matt Damon, yes. Um, by the way, <laughs> Teo, do you, uh, do you know who voices Samuel L. Jackson? I checked here, Fred at the Shore. Fred at the Shore, yeah. Uh, oh. So apparently, all famous Hollywood actors are under the control of Kim Jong Il. More like Kim they've Jong-il. been invited to a special party. Basically, does Kim Jong Il is manipulating them and making, and he's pr- pretending to be nice and on their side. Basically, it's, he's playing a double game. After all, remember, he's just so lonely. Hello. Yeah. <gasps> oh no. Hold on. How specific? And that's. <laughs> oh, hold on. Nobody does. <laughs> really? Not even a mathematician would be able to. <laughs> <laughs> Terminator 2 style. No, not the Big Ben! <laughs> well, there goes the Big Ben. Sorry, Dubs. <laughs> no! And by the way, Big Ben's the bell, it's not the name of the clock tower! <laughs> oh no, the, M- the AMC feeders! No! What about, now? What about the 7 Eleven? Well, that uh... <laughs> Wow. Oh, no. <laughs> so there you go, there. He's got the actor to distract all the world leaders while he goes around and blows everything up. Not the, not the world's greatest Donald Trump impersonator. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, I swear. Hold it, on, it, hold it, hold on. Oh. <gasps> oh. oh God, he's not gonna sing again, is he? <laughs> no. It looks like Lisa just hit a nerve. <laughs> Go ahead, does. As who who voices Kim Jong Il? <laughs> a Trey Parker. Uh, I was gonna say, is it is it me or this Trey Parker's Kim Jong Il voice sound a bit like um? Uh, I'm not sure which South Park character specifically, but... Hold on, there's... South Park. I'm guessing this is the best song to you, Pedro. Yeah, this is the best song. (laughs) That's an awful lot, yes, it is. I mean, I don't think Trey Parker and that still like Michael Bay very much. Well, neither do I, Thwips, so... (laughs) Or at the very least, his movies. Pearl Harbor, okay, I will defend some Michael Bay movies. Pearl Harbor is not one of them. Oh. Keep in mind, <laughs> Babs, this was before he got better. Keep that in mind. And Trent Parker, have, uh, Trent Matt have acknowledged that. In Ooh, ben Affleck. Yeah, Ben Affleck. This was, trust me, he was terrible at Armageddon. <laughs> oh, trust yeah, me. poor Gooby Gooding Jr. got screwed over. 
I agree. It, yeah, Trey and Matt are actually big fans of Cuba Gooding, actually. To, it, just to give you an idea, Dweebs, uh, since Armageddon is like a lot, a big cast, uh, like mm -hmm. around the halfway point of the movie, like half of them just die. No, not even um, like a last word or anything. Okay. Paul Harbour sucked? Hold on. Yeah, just oh. a little bit more than he misses her. Just a little bit more. But it <laughs> does signify <laughs> much. <laughs> That's how much Pearl Harbor sucks, Dwips. I'm gonna love also oh, how nobody noticed the fact that Mount Rushmore got uh, detonated. You know, if this film came out two years later, I wonder what they, what they would have thought of the island or something. Um, I don't think they've ever mentioned the island. They have parodied the... Hold on. Basically, there's a, there's a there's a joke in a certain South Park episode in season three where where Kyle is about to die and he, and he's like like uh, so I, so I'm done like uh, I'm I'm condemned and Michael Ray keeps making movies there is no God <laughs> so yeah they don't like Michael Bay's movies at all and neither do I for the record. It's interesting because the island was that rare Michael Bay film that had all the Michael Bay ingredients and yet nobody saw it. <laughs> So there you go, Spotswood is about to go for a desperate clan. He's going to blow up yeah. the entire uh, Mount Rushmore. Oh, sorry, Mount whatever there are. Sorry, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Born that, blow, born, that blow up, born that blow up the weapons of mass destruction and kill everybody. No, 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 no. It would blow up King Jonil before he could give the signal to blow up the WMDs. Yeah. And keep in mind, the King Jonil wants to resonate things all around the world while, you know, the leader wants to do just North Korea. Wait, hold on. Oh, you mean anything? I want to. Um. Two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, in retrospect, it was a bit of a bad decision to, to hire an actor who never who has no training or anything. But yeah. <laughs> All right, you're gonna have to prove that you're that you're serious now. Yeah. Excuse me. For here, right now. <laughs> oh, I am serious. Yes. <laughs> yep, I believe that. Yes. I mean, I guess I can't argue with that. You are dodging the point. Well, he did say he would do anything. <laughs> well, I mean, the whole place was blown up. <laughs> Just to be sure, Leaves. And it yeah. killed everybody. <laughs> Dribs, dribs, dribs. In a lot of comedy of errors, this is usually the point where somebody who shouldn't be watching ends up watching. I mean, I, I don't know what's worse. The base being blown up, or the fact that it was Michael Moore that did it. <laughs> All right, Dwebs, uh, now, uh, now it's Harry's time to shine, as you're about to hear. All right, when you're ready, Gary. I, I can't do it. Um, oh, yes. uh, listen to the score. Uh, <laughs> God bless America. Right, too? Yeah. Yeah. A man, will, a, yeah. A man just, must do just everything. Just a reminder that this is the same composer that did Metal Gear Solid 3 the same year. A man must do everything he can to save his country, even give someone a blowjob. Yes. That's how dedicated he is, like he, like Spotswood just said. 
Well, Logos, you mentioned about his lack of training. Well, we're going to fix that with a training montage. Mm hmm. So more. Well, hang on, he saved. Him. Hang on, he saved himself oh, earlier. Why is he saving again? <laughs> uh, oh, it's this song. Yes. <laughs> you missed. Uh, you missed. You missed. Shira, you missed uh, Gary giving his uh, final proof of trust of uh, of giving a spot for the blowjob while uh, while the music swells. Oh, the montage. <laughs> montage. But I haven't. Uh, I haven't missed. You know, my favorite part of the movie yet. Uh, no. Is that, is no, no, that, no, don't, uh, don't worry. No, no, Pedro, uh, sorry, Tia knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we know it, Pedro, don't worry. Oh, okay. Just wait and see. You, you, you'll know it when you see it. Yeah. All right, Leaves, are you convinced that with a simple montage you can improve? Well, I mean, this is a guy who shaved himself three times, even though he already shaved earlier, so... No. <laughs> well, it's all we got. Meanwhile, in an so. episode of Lego Ninja Go. <laughs> Yay! Death is very peaceful. Yes. <laughs> I mean, there's no one to really fight after all the death has gone around. Depends what medium you're talking about. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this it? No, 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 no. No, no. Just wait, Pedro, you'll see. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna. <laughs> no. There's no point when it comes to training. And of course, <laughs> she's putting a Chinese dress. So. I mean, yeah, yes. not wrong. <laughs> Get it because that was the very same before. Yeah, and that makes and that makes it a theme of the movie. It's because, totally incorporated. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's funny how Trey and Matt made fun of Alec Baldwin. Yet nowadays, it seems like they kind of run on the same affiliation that Alec Baldwin would. Then again, well, I guess things change. Yeah, <laughs> of course, oh, Return right. of a Jedi. Well, actually, this is more like. Uh... Revenge of the Sith, more like you know. The, no, no, no. Where you go? It's it's when you uh, yeah. jump. It's when oh, you yeah, yeah, no, jump yeah. on the base. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Besides, Revenge of the Sith wasn't made yet. Oh yeah, you're right. Oh god. <laughs> like I know Revenge Trim. Sith, I think at this point there yeah. was episode two. You're right. You're right. Never mind. Oh, it's Star Wars. It, it'll probably be culturally oh, relevant. There you go, there's so that statue. That statue is, a, is an actual person. You'll notice because... That's why he it's... keeps changing position. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> there you go. Of course we are. <laughs> uh... Okay, um, I'm not gonna make a Char okay. I won't make a Charlie Sheen joke. Actually, that's uh, Martin Sheen, the one uh, oh. who played the uh, President Kennedy. Oh, I thought I thought you meant Mike. I thought you meant Mike. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 Martin Sheen. Yeah, that's the thing. Apparently, uh, there you go, Dweebs. Even the Mission Impossible mask is guys. Oh, Apparently, someone got Michael Sheen mixed up with Martin Sheen. So Michael renamed his Twitter account Martin Sheen. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, you really suck at being psychic. <laughs> We're actually going to address that in a few minutes, too. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Apparently they're already familiar with this proof of trust. <laughs> that's some interesting initiation you got there. Inevitable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I am Iron Man Snap. Inevitable! Inevitable! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if, this, if this bit were in the Avengers End game, then all tension would have gone right out the bunny. Yeah, just the whole I am Iron Man. Again, speaking of Avengers, they I can't love. can't point their fingers. How can he click his fingers? Again, speaking like... of Avengers, I cannot help but point out the irony of Leave Tyler literally being shot right next to Samuel Jackson. I love, um, <laughs> I, I love, um, I love Alec Baldwin puppet's uh, angry face. <laughs> Those are some very angry eyebrows. And yet he's still not as um, angry as he would be in the Mission Impossible films that the real Alec Baldwin would be in. Right. <laughs> slow mo. Slow mo, of course. And and then, and then. Uh... <laughs> yeah, um, we have the, we're puppets. We have a bit of a hard time walking there. Well, there you go. So, there you go, Dwebs. Now it's Team America versus the the Phil Mattress Guild. Oh, boy. Janine Garofalo. Oh, no. Who? <laughs> Who? Uh, she's not, not that relevant anymore, Dwebs. But she wasn't. Uh, in, um... Oh. There's no time to argue. Uh... You're in the middle of a firefight. Danny Glover! No! <laughs> Why? You were in Saw, which came out the same year. Alright, I think it's time. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's this. I think it was. <laughs> ah, okay. the cat scene. There you go, Dwebs. Um, now they're gonna... The, the panther. <gasps> oh my god, it's... Oh, oh my no! god, they're so vicious! <laughs> <laughs> Take them away! <laughs> what do you think of the the panther uh, special effects? Well, I'm not gonna make a it's a better cats movie than cats joke because I haven't well, seen the movie. They use but, real um, cats in there. It's not. interesting you say that, Dwebs, because uh, I think you're gonna find the next the, the the backstory of Chris interesting. Hold on, uh, it goes back to that recent movie that I mentioned earlier. You'll see. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, well, I mean, she was in Speed Racer, so. Oh, anyway, yeah, backstory now. Listen to those clips. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, God, that was my first musical. <laughs> oh. Cat. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh no. The foof. <laughs> Ooh. Oh no. Oh gosh. Wait, so you're um, right by uh, I, I was and that's, about and that's, to say and that's, and that's why I don't trust yeah. Dang, it's just Elba did you mm. dirty. Um, well, then again, 15 years later, you know, we'd see cats that were apparently just as freaky. No, no, no. Worse than freaky. Let me put it like this. Even furries. <laughs> uh... Yeah, even furries don't like the movie. Yeah. Oh, here you go, Taylor. We're about to address for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we just kind of been indulging you for a while, so. Yeah. 
Damn, those panthers look ferocious. But guess what, too? She got through to them! Somehow. Attack kitties! Attack kitties! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Attack cats, eh? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh god! <laughs> no! Cats to hide the puppets! No! We, no, I, I, no. I them up. we probably feed them up with actual, like, meat or something. No! Yeah, not they're, they're probably hollow. Not there Danny Glover, he has a family! His son will even Oof. play a lion! I forgot about that bit. That oh, was gruesome. Tommy L. Jackson. Matt Damon. Wow, it's the one time saying his name is actually relevant. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, he did. Mr. Alec Barwin! Yeah, back when he was uh, a rather mixed bag of an actor. Like, Not just him, his entire family was uh, basically the butt of the jokes. Again, like Ben Affleck, he got better with <clears> age. <throat> Even though, what age was he uh, in 2004? Oh, I think I'll, he was still... I'll check. I don't think he was young by this point, was he? I'll check. Uh, um, he was born... I, like, I mean, not the others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't... 46. Yeah, yeah, so... so He's yeah. 62 at the time of this recording now, so... The caveat is that he looks surprisingly <laughs> good for a 62-year-old. He's, uh, like, Vince McMahon, there's plenty of old people who do. Oh, shit. Of course. Uh, always I with the countdown. <laughs> Gotta have a countdown, of course. Tim, what are you doing? Tim who, sorry? Tim Robbins. I, I never I don't think I've ever seen a Tim Robbins movie. <laughs> Would you stand still spots would, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> he used to feel the tension. I actually yeah. don't remember uh, any action film with Alan Hunt. I mean, turn, uh, Twister doesn't really count. It's, it it's really weird, it's weird because this is more of a Kill Bill reference, uh, so you think they would use Uma Herman. I guess. Hmm. Of course. Gotta reference The Matrix, because it was the <laughs> Everyone was referencing The Matrix. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. It was practically a law. Yes, Matt Damon, I'm aware that you're Matt Damon. <laughs> There you go. We'll feed her to the cats. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh. Jeez. Um, Vibs, have you seen uh, uh, Tenacious D in the, in the Peak of Destiny? No. Oh. Yay! <laughs> oh, yeah, there, God. There, yeah, there was another thing. That hand movement, and there was an actual hand doing that. <laughs> burn, Tim Robbins, burn! I don't know, he seemed to like it. <laughs> Okay, I guess there was a bit of immersion for the audience back there. <laughs> Alright, we're about to get my personal favorite scene, actually. Yay! We have to convince them that, yeah. Um, I know this one. Let's call uh, Mr. Satan Hercule. We are not so lucky, too. We need Gary to do his acting. 
So there you go, this. Gary now has to outact Alec Baldwin. His idol. There you go. He actually mellowed out. I mean, but, but Jesus, these this crowd is so unforgiving. Has it even started yet? They're po they're politicians, Luis. What do you expect? Put <laughs> All right. So let's see. Yeah, that's not convincing. Here we go. Listen here, Dust. <clears throat> Ooh. Dare talk that way about Alec Baldwin. <laughs> How did Harry Gregson Williams not corpse while he was scoring the scene? He probably didn't <laughs> know. The only thing I can fucking asshole is a dick. He, he got like a general direction. What if he was shown the movie afterwards and just thought, what? How much do you want to bet the, the scenes oh, you were me, given Harry's for? Harry's very was... open minded uh, when it comes to <laughs> what he should do with music, trust me. I like to imagine that they gave him the script for a serious tone picture. So, yeah, I, I, I so brilliant. Like, so, so yeah, I do like the fact that the movie manages to uh, m get, bring in a bit more balance. In a, like up until this point, they've been completely anti um, what was going, what America was doing up until that point. However, they did bring up the point that okay, there's problems, but at the same time, we do need to take care of that problem. Uh, the, ter uh, the, the terrorist problem is still a problem that still needs to be taken <laughs> care of. You're you're not all go, Alec. <laughs> yeah. No, not Alec Baldwin. <laughs> no, no, that was going to be a Mission Impossible spy and by, 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 by the way, uh, Terry, you might have noticed that. Uh... Oh, hold on. You know who probably also really liked uh, uh, the, you know, the the parody in this movie, the, the, the George mm -hmm. Clooney. In case you don't Ooh. know, George Clooney is actually friends with Trey and Matt. Um, he, he, he even he's even in, he's even even plays Sparky, Stan's dog in South Park. So. Yeah, oh, cool. got impaled by the German counselor. But the talk still ticking. Uh, which one is the cancel button? It's yeah. the red one. Harry made it. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> It's just one millisecond. Yeah, it was so it was, romantic. It, it was just such a romantic speech. And then, like a lot, like quite a few actors, this would be his biggest role, and you would go on to be in a lot of director DVD shock. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, he's a Broadway actor, so he's actually probably still alright. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Other than Broadway, what else is he gonna do? Trust me, Dwoobs. Broadway is it'll keep him busy enough. Yeah, there's nothing else he needs to do. Yes, a bond that cannot be broken. <clears throat> yes. Yes. <laughs> Great points were made and today. Right, turns out King Kong Yu is actually an alien cockroach bent on <laughs> <your> domination. <laughs> <laughs> you know what this reminds me of, Shirai? 
Yeah. That episode from the Powerpuff Girls with that uh, guy who was also uh, a cockroach secretly. Um, did you remember that one? No. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. Yay. Fuck yeah. The world police. And now we get the full song over the credits. Yeah, for a second there, I thought they were robbing a bank. Could be the free spray. There you go. <laughs> uh, by the way, everybody, keep around during the credits because there's actually a, 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 some nice little jokes throughout the credits. So keep that copy of, of your movie running, everybody. Um, so there you go. That was Team America, World Police. So what are you going to do when we come for you, terrorists? Huh? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Good job. Uh, oh, there was match. actually a costume designer for this. How nice. Well, it has to. I mean, someone has to dress the puppets. Pop up through design on. True, but each three twists over there were like multiple people involved from the team. Mm hmm. <laughs> hmm. There you go. Uh, if I remember correctly, now Yay. it's uh, one of the other songs that. I think if they play Freedom Isn't Free. No. Oh, no, everyone has eight. I forgot it. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, while this is going on, uh, Dwebs, so what do you think of the movie? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure how much of this is because the puppetry in some cases reminds me a lot of Thunderbirds. But, um, yeah, I thought, I thought this was a very well done, entertaining and funny comedy. Mm -hmm. Especially oh, the whole, especially that a couple of the... Um, oh, Fred I mean, Tessori played Samuel Jackson. How nice. I mean, I while, that. I mean, while some bits haven't really aged all that well, um, there were quite a few that are still kind of relevant today. Especially the whole celebrities trying to, you know, be uh, meddle. Trying to, they're trying to meddle and stuff, and when only like maybe two of them out of the out of a certain group at a time actually are um, you know qualified to do so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like Arnie and um, maybe somebody else. Um, uh, right. Arnie's really comes to mind. But yeah, I, I enjoyed this movie. May, may, I, I guess maybe um I guess maybe the way this film does the kind of stuff Trey and Matt do, um, compared to South Park, which I'm still not a huge fan of, I guess maybe they must do something here that maybe enjoy it a lot more than Bob. Well, this movie well, is not as raunchy as okay. uh, South Park tends to get. Uh, okay. So I can uh, I can see that. I think I can answer why. Part of the criticism that South Park these days gets is like, well, yeah, well, it's good at calling out some stuff. It doesn't always feel like it has the good balance that a lot of people preferred in like the earlier years of South Park, where you know. It was more on the up and up here and there. Again, it depends on what you want here and there. That's one thing that I feel like this movie does great, that, you know, I kind of do miss about modern South Park, was having a good middle point here and there. I can see that. Uh, what did you think of the score, Drips? Well, it's a Harry Gregson Williams score. At the very least, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fit the movie, so... All right, then. Yeah. Uh, are you done? Yeah. All right, uh, Taylor. All right. Uh, right. Uh, honestly, this is, like, it's even better than I remember, to be honest. It's been actually a while since I watched this, but, uh, oh, um... Oh, oh, no, no, this is still a song. Never mind. <laughs> no, 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 we're gonna hear a new song from the full version that's on the album. Hold on. <clears throat> if I remember correctly, it's somewhere in here. Yeah, I think it's now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are far worse directors than Michael Bay. Come on, guys. <laughs> uh, well, that, well, well, Dwebs, uh, everybody has that one director that they really, really hate. Well, yeah. Trey and Matt, it's, tr it's Michael Bay. Anyway, kind of like you. But, with, uh, um, I also, uh, I also, I also noticed in the comments. Oh, he's a writer. 
yeah, yeah, true. But I also noticed in the credit up above that there were like a bunch of the, the actual actor that they used. They mentioned specifically the credits mentioned they did not, uh, you know, uh, give their consents to be to have their names used for this movie. Um, All right, continue. Yeah, 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 I was about to. Um, again, better than I remember, maybe like one or two of the jokes uh, uh, I can imagine, like may not have uh, um, um, aged even to completely to this day. But I will say that 95% of the movie is just as, uh, you know, um, watchable, if not even better, thanks to all those things that, well, unintentionally um, became relevant again or out of nowhere to this day. Um, okay. Yeah, it doesn't hear. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, this is a song about how um, about how Alec Baldwin is a failure. <laughs> well, that's a song I like how the subtitles Hill. are writing this, you know, like as as it's pronounced by him. Like, yeah, oh, Mark, um, Mark Sh- oh, yeah, I think apparently Mark Shyman was supposed to do the score for this movie, but he got replaced by Harry Gregson Williams. For some reason. Also, again, Mark still worked on the songs. So. Also, again, mm. the the songs too. Um, normal, uh, normally, I mentioned this in the past, but normally, I'm not usually to be being a big fan of uh, musicals and songs being used in movies. But if there's one thing that Trey and Matt managed to do is to make entertaining songs that are also super hilarious. So, and this is not, a, and this is not an exception. Like the, the songs are legitimately fun to listen and uh, are also layers in the context of a movie, probably because of the fact they parodied the kind of tropes associated with musical numbers, like the I'm lonely kind of song, the montage, all the kind of stuff. Um, so again, I loved it. Um, and even as a story on its own, it's not its not even without the values because, you know, it even ends on a rather po- positive message. Instead of condemning entirely the actor association class, which they could have easily just kept doing it, you know, um, the movie still managed to say that, sure, they, they were misguided, but at the end of the day, the real villain was still, you know, Kim, Kim Jong-il. Um, so there's also that kind of nice, which also it's another thing that Trey and Matt tend to do. They, they tend to be, you know, caustic with their critique most of the time, but there are those moments where they squeeze in, manage to squeeze in an actual genuine moral that, uh, you know, showcase whether they're not like monsters or anything. They're just yeah. people who want to have fun. In um, particular, one of my favorite South Park episodes, I don't know if you've seen that one too, is about how it's about uh, where the South Park girls are intentionally, uh, you know, like uh, like uh, doing all these kinds of uh, uh, retouches on on social media on their pictures to make themselves look oh, prettier. Oh yes, is, yes. And, and and there's a very poignant ending where uh, Wendy is forced to give up on her values because yeah. she's being forced to, uh, and it's a very poignant moment. Uh, so I really like when it, that one in particular. But yeah, again, still a solid movie. If anything, Beast and the South Park movie makes me wish Trey and Matt actually did more movies. It's kind of it's kind of a waste that these are the only two under their catalogs. Oh, oh, but oh, but too, like... the production of this film was so crazy. Well, yeah, that, that's one thing. Also, we didn't mention the the the, the ratio. The budget was thirty two millions, and he grows only fifty one. So not. Uh, a success technically it probably was not by them constantly having to reshoot scenes because you know trey and matt's a style yeah. if something gets updated we gotta go back to the drawing board and update that here and there mm-hmm. but um but no honestly again uh another solid the movie and again i wish in the future we'll see potentially more well, Thanks. well, too. If you want I mean, more, if 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 you want more of uh, Matt or Trey, there's always Despicable Me Three. That's uh, ugh. well, Trey Parker is only in that as a character. He doesn't actually participate in the writing in any way. Well, so that's I, why I, I say I, if you I, want more of them. Well, Matt's not is not in the movie, is he? Isn't it only Trey that that was in that movie? I don't was remember. Matt in that movie too. 
He might have I been. Remember Trey Parker. I remember Trey Parker being advertised as one of the characters. I don't remember Matt Stone being advertised. I think some words that Matt may have been in it, just that he wasn't credited for some off reason. Whatever. I I don't know. Well, for me. Also, just just oh, sorry, my, my, last minor thing. The movie was also nominated for a lot of awards. Not a pro- not a proper Oscar, mind you, but stuff like the Teen Choice MTV Award. But he actually won one, uh, the Empire Award for Best Comedy. Neat. Anyway, go on, Pedro. Yeah, for me, it's just a really a really great sharp as hell uh, comedy. Um, it it does such a great job in parroting. The, the the American society of the time, and like Theo said, surprisingly, it hasn't aged all that badly. Um, some moments, like Dwez pointed out, can uh, are dated, but it makes up for it by having some stuff that are way ahead of its time. Um, and, and the critiques are very sharp, um, very sharp. The social commentary in this movie is so sharp you might cut yourself watching this. Movie. <laughs> it, it's just so good. And some of the bits make you fun of those kinds of films uh, that treat the treat destroying half of a city as saving the day. Yeah, the, yeah. the, the damage control. Yeah, uh, it. Uh, so yeah, it's a really, really great comedy, uh, and I love it. It's uh, again, it's such a good. It does really that great job that I. Uh, and I also really love Trey and Matt's voice acting. It really is one of those cases where they're not actors; they have no kind of acting training whatsoever. But as voice actors, I absolutely love them. They're hilarious in their roles, um, and they, and this is another uh, great example of how they do a great job in delivering some really funny voices for the characters. So it's really cool. Um, uh, the music is really good as well, both the songs and the score. Um, so good job, Harry and Mark, and Trey and Matt, because they also wrote the, uh, helped write the songs. Um, and yeah, the, the puppetry is pretty good, from, at least for me. Keep in mind, everybody, I'm like, Dwebs here, I'm not particularly an expert in puppetry fiction, puppetry shows and movies. So I'm not exactly the best person to make that judgment. But for, for me, from my perspective, the, the puppetry looks good. And even when it does look ridiculous, you can tell that's the point for the purpose of... of uh, yeah, over-exaggeration. Comedy. Over-exaggeration for puppetry. Again... Again, uh, they did the same thing with the animation of, of the South Park movie as well. So this is clearly something that uh, it, the the the, the Tremont are perfectly self-aware of their low production values. Don't worry, they're perfectly self-aware. They're intentional, as they've claimed it themselves. Um, so yeah, really, really great movie. I really, I still really love it. Um, and it's it's a movie that I can always put on and just have a laugh because it's just that good. And it's also very insightful with its uh, commentary. So, great. Shuri? Pretty much what we've said. It's just, um, it's just a good comedy movie. And, yeah, the puppets were an interesting approach, although um, it seems like um, it's one of those cases Jova mentioned of um, one of their strengths being their weaknesses. They probably thought this would be a lot easier than it ended up being. Yeah. But it... it um, it still turned out pretty all right for people I'm assuming have never actually attempted anything like this before this. Well, I'm sure so, they did get people who were at least somewhat experienced to help out. I don't think they did it by themselves. So there must have been some kind of expert working with them on this movie, I think. I don't know who it was, but... Uh, like a sure. consultant. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's just... Um, it's just a lot of fun, and uh, again, it's... It's uh, it's interesting how much of this actually holds up. I mean, not all of it, but a good amount of it. Mm-hmm. And that's it. All right. Uh, Jova, close us out. Yeah, it's a good movie. I'd say that this movie represents Trey and Matt and arguably their best, you know? It's like I've said. I mean... I do still watch South Park occasionally, though I will admit, I can see where some people say that maybe they've gone a little too much on just the one note side of not really having a good middle ground here and there. It's more just spouting criticism here and there. Whereas this, though, this movie, like I said, I feel it represents them when they were absolutely at their best. Like, they called stuff out left and right, but they still had overall good morals to have rather than, you know, just a social commentary. And I like it. The music definitely helps the humor because it plays everything so seriously. 
which mm-hmm. yeah helps stuff immensely it's a compelling enough plot here and there that does actually feel like it has stakes despite it being obviously a parody yeah mm-hmm. um i like it it's a good movie and i'd say it's definitely some of trey metz's best work Shame about the budget thing, but yeah, like I said, sometimes their greatest strengths are their greatest weaknesses. Uh, I do what, feel like. Would you... I'm sorry. Go, mm-hmm. go ahead and finish. I do. I f- wanted to ask you a question, but uh, go ahead and finish your thought. It's like I said. Um, one of the, um, I do feel like well that maybe they handled this with the mentality that hey, this will be like South Park, but no, nah, no, nowhere near that simple. Yeah. You wanted to ask uh, me I'm something? Actually, I'm, I, I, I'm actually curious. Uh, which do you prefer, this movie or the or South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut? Oh, that's a tough pick. Okay, when it comes to the songs, I'll admit I kind of like South Park's movies better because the songs, oh, yeah. I the songs feel... Oh, yeah. are fantastic. Yeah, they're fantastic. When it comes to overall plot, hmm... Well, okay, South Park's plot, I'll admit, feels a bit like a bunch of microplots all taped together, whereas this one feels like a big epic of sorts here and there, so it's a bit of a tough call. I guess I'd say plot-wise, hmm, that's a really tough one because South Park really does a lot of cool stuff to the point where you'd almost think that it feels like the ending of the series. Yeah. Ah, mm, it's a very tough pick. I guess I'm going to give the edge slightly to Team America World Police. Mm-hmm. Curious, right. what about you? Uh, I love both movies for different reasons. Like, I love this particularly because South Park is uh, a direct jab at censorship. Like, a completely anti-censorship message, which... I'm personally very passionate about because I hate censorship, so obviously I'm going to have uh, a very strong fondness for that movie because I completely agree with its values. Um, this movie, on the other hand, I just love it just because of its overall silliness in general. Like, this is, uh, like, uh, I think, like, it's one of those kids where Bigger, Longer, and Uncut is the, I like the message more, but Team America is probably the funnier movie. Mm-hmm. Like, in, ter- in, ter- in terms of silliness, like, it's just in terms of, like, it, because it plays up the silliness to such a high degree, it's just delicious. So, so it, it's one of those cases where I love both movies for different reasons, I guess you can say. Okay, then. Right, that was Team else, America, else? World Police. Nah, I enjoyed All right. it. All right, everybody, that was Team America. Uh, <laughs> See you, man. See ya. See ya. See ya.